Today I'm going to share with you how I made this beautiful loaf of fresh milled flour soft and fluffy sandwich bread using my bread machine dough cycle and my trick to autolyze it. Hey y'all, welcome to Robin on the Farm. Today I'm going to show you how I autolyze my dough and use my bread machine dough cycle at the same time. This is something that I didn't think that you could do and I finally figured it out. So I wanted to share it with you today. When you autolyze, basically you combine your flour in your water and let it sit for a little while, your bread will have such a better texture, crumble, it'll rise better. It turns out more like your white breads. We're gonna start with one cup of warm water, about 110 degrees. Just throw that right into your bread machine pan. Next, we're gonna want some oil. I'm gonna use some of this olive oil. You can use any kind of oil that you want. Something light tasting would be good. Coconut oil, sunflower oil, whatever you want. Or you can use some melted butter if you want. But we're gonna use a quarter cup of oil. Just put that right on in there. And our next ingredient is honey. Um, I'm gonna use this honey. You can also use maple syrup if you want to, um, but you're gonna want a quarter cup of honey or maple syrup. So just put that right on in there. I like to spray whatever kind of container I'm gonna put my honey in. Um, it just helps it to come out that much easier. Our next ingredient is an egg. You're gonna want one egg for this recipe. Sometimes with my whole wheat breads, I'll use some dough conditioner or some vital wheat gluten. You can do that if you want, but for this one, I'm just gonna use an egg. I do it both ways, but I think more people have eggs in their home. So I'm gonna go with one egg and it'll do kind of the same thing. Our next ingredient is our wheat. I went ahead right before I started filming and pulled out my Nutramil and I ground up some fresh wheat. This is hard winter white wheat. You can use any kind of fresh milled flour that you want. I have a ton of red wheat and white wheat stored in my food storage, so that's what I mainly use. And that's just because I have tons of it and I need to get through some of it. I ground up about two and a half cups of wheat berries and that gave me just under four cups of this whole wheat flour. So I'm gonna use three and three quarters cups of this whole wheat flour. And I already measured it out, so I'm just gonna put it straight on into my pan. Our next ingredient is salt. I'm gonna use this real salt. This is a really cool North American pink salt, um, but you can use plain old iodized table salt if you want, but you're gonna want one and a half teaspoons of salt. Go ahead and pour that right on in there. Now, normally this is when you'd put your yeast in, but you're not gonna do that this time. This time you're gonna go ahead and put your bread machine pan into your bread machine. This is my Zoja Rushi bread machine. This thing is fantastic. It has a really strong motor, it has double paddles. It's great for fresh milled flours. It's strong enough. So for this, I am just gonna go ahead and choose the dough cycle and I'm gonna press start. But I'm not gonna let the dough cycle go all the way an hour and a half. I'm only gonna let this dough cycle go for about five minutes. It's just gonna mix up our ingredients and then I'm gonna turn off the bread machine. I'm gonna turn it off and let it sit here for about 30 minutes to an hour. Any time in there works great. The longer the better, really. But I'm gonna let it sit there and that is gonna be the step of autolyzing. That's gonna let our flour absorb the moisture that's in our other ingredients and it's gonna give us way better bread. So I'm gonna show this to you in just a few minutes and then I'm gonna turn this off and let it sit. Okay, the dough cycle has been going for about five minutes and it's mixed up really nice. This is our dough with all of the ingredients except the yeast. Do not add your yeast yet. You do not want it to have yeast in it while it's autolyzing. So do you see how it's sticking to the sides and bottom of the bread machine? Normally that's not a good thing, but today it is. I want it to be a little bit extra wet as it goes into the autolyzing process so that it can have some extra moisture to absorb. So this is what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna turn off my bread machine. And I'm just going to close the top and I'm gonna let it sit there. I'm gonna let it sit there probably for about 45 minutes and then I'll show it to you at that point. Okay, y'all, it has been exactly 53 minutes and my dough has been autolyzing. Now I can tell that a lot of the extra moisture has been absorbed and this looks great. That is exactly what is supposed to happen during the autolyzing phase. So now is the time to add the yeast. Now normally I use active dry yeast, 
but whenever I autolyze, I use instant yeast. So I love this yeast. This is great when I'm making bread that I autolyze. So I store this in the freezer. I get it out right in time to make bread. You don't have to let it come to room temperature or anything like that. So I'm gonna add the yeast. This recipe needs two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. So I'm just gonna just sprinkle it right on in there. And now I'm gonna start the dough cycle. I'm gonna start a brand new dough cycle. So it's gonna be about an hour and a half. I'm gonna let this new dough cycle run all the way through an hour and a half. This dough cycle has been running for about five minutes. You can see that all of that yeast got incorporated in there and the ball of dough is looking really good. It's not too wet, it's not sticking to the sides or the bottom. If yours is, add maybe a tablespoon or two more flour until it starts looking more like this and pulling away from the sides and bottom. If yours is looking really crumbly, maybe add about a tablespoon of water until it looks smooth like this. Give it a few minutes to mix around too so that it can come together. But this is looking really great. It's a little bit tacky and that is exactly what I want it to be like. So now I'm just gonna close the door and let this dough cycle run and let the bread machine do all the work. I just poured some of this olive oil into my cast iron pan. So I'm just preparing my pan for the dough. I like to just pour a little bit of oil in there, rub it all around to get it nice on the edges, all the little creases. And now it is ready for our dough to go in. This is what I recommend over spring for sure. The saddest thing ever would be to spend all this time making a loaf of bread and then having it get stuck because it's not oiled up good enough. So do this and you won't have any problems. It's been an hour and 28 minutes. The dough cycle is complete and there it is. It has risen nicely. Okay, it's time to get it out and shape it into a loaf. Here's our dough and it is time to punch it down and shape it into a loaf. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna literally punch down this dough. I hate this part because I think it's so pretty all risen like that. But you're just gonna give it a nice punch down and then pull it out of the bread pan. Now that I have it turned out from my pan, I'm just gonna press it out like this and it's time to shape it into a loaf. You'll see you wanna press it out about as wide as your loaf pan. Now, I like to do the head down, shoulders in method. So you pull the head down like this, and then you pull the shoulders or the sides in like that. And you press it out with the palms of your hand. And then just continue to roll it into a nice sized loaf. Then pinch the ends, pinch the seams and the bottom seam. Give it a good hit. You want your dough to relax. This gives it really good surface tension when you roll it like that. And then you wanna kinda of pat it out. Look at that. Doesn't that look nice? Okay. You can slam it on the countertop a little bit. That helps it to relax too. And this looks great. I'm gonna grab my loaf pan. I'm just gonna plop it in there. And there it is, that's all there is to it to shape this dough. Now that the loaf is shaped, I'm gonna let this rise on my countertop for about 15 to 20 minutes while my oven's preheating. And I'm gonna go ahead and cover it with some plastic wrap so that it doesn't dry out. I'll show you what it should look like before I put it in the oven. Okay, y'all, check out this dough. It's been rising for just 15 minutes. I've gotten my oven preheated to 350 degrees and this looks great. This is what I want it to look like. It is ready to go into the oven. So I'm gonna throw this in there for 35 minutes and then I will show it to you when it's time to get it out. Here is our loaf of fresh milled flour, honey whole wheat bread that we made using the dough cycle of the bread machine and we autolyzed it. Doesn't this bread look beautiful? I let it bake at 350 degrees for 35 minutes and it just turned out so pretty. So it's fresh out of the oven, it's time to turn it out. Okay, so it's time to turn this loaf out from the cast iron bread pan. Let's see how easily it comes out. Yes, perfect. That's because we oiled up the inside of the bread pan so well. That's what I like to see. Oh my goodness. Look at this gorgeous loaf of bread. Isn't that so pretty? I just love it. Okay, 
This is how I like to cool my bread. Once I get it out of the loaf pan, I like to take a pat of butter and rub it all over the crust. This will give you that really good buttery crust flavor and it'll also help soften up your crust. And I like soft crust, so that looks great. It also gives you this really gorgeous shine. And from here, I just cover it with a tea towel and wrap it up and all that warmth and condensation will help you have an even softer crust too. Now, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna leave it on the counter like this to let it cool. I don't do cooling racks. I think that gives you kind of a crispy, crunchy crust on the bottom and I don't like that. So this is how I do it. I'm just gonna leave it on my countertop to cool and I will cut it once it's cooled off a little bit. Okay, it's time to cut into our bread. I've let it cool for a little bit. The longer you can let it cool, the better it will slice, the better texture and crumb you'll have. This is especially important with whole wheat breads and whole grain breads. I was hoping that this angle would let you see the bread really well. Let's see. Yes, look at that texture. It's soft, it's fluffy. Keep in mind that this is 100% whole wheat bread. Look at that. You can tell it's not dense. It is soft and fluffy and it is so much like white bread. Let's cut another slice. You definitely wanna use a really nice bread knife to get really nice slices of bread. Yep, look at that. Oh, I just love this bread. The taste is fantastic too. This is such good bread. So you can squeeze it. You can see that it's really not like a dense loaf of wheat bread. And I have made several dense loaves of wheat bread. This autolyzing really, really helps. So if you never tried it, I totally recommend it. I also wanted to show you this other loaf of bread that I made, the exact same recipe, but I let this one bake at 375 degrees for 30 minutes. Just gave you a little bit darker crust. So if you want a little bit darker crust, go with that. I will leave a printable recipe down in the description for this fresh milk flour sandwich bread that we made using the dough cycle on our bread machine and autolyzed. Thanks so much for being here with me on Robin on the Farm. I'll see you next time. Robin's in the kitchen, dough beneath her hands. Wheat from the fields and eggs from her land. Sunlight through the window, a warm golden glow. She's working hard to make that dough. With flour 